burning infamy throughout Westeros during the reign of Aenys I, the rebel vulture king of Dorne raised 30,000 men to attack the so-called Seven Kingdoms in retaliation for House Targaryen's failed invasion of the South in the First Dornish War. After burning Blackhaven and mutilating its lord, the rebellion was ultimately defeated by Marcher Lords when the Vulture King made the mistake of splitting his massive army in two. Captured and killed, the outlaw leader's legacy was already secured, as the people of Dorne considered him a hero, fighting for vengeance against hostile invaders. As a result, the title Vulture King lived on and was adopted by a number of Dornish rebels, bandits, and warlords throughout the years. Emerging in 61 AC, during the reign of Jaehaerys the Conciliator, the second Vulture King was nowhere near as successful as his predecessor, pillaging the Dornish marches with a few hundred men. Yet he was soon joined by Sir Boris Baratheon, the disgruntled and volatile younger brother to the Lord of Storm's End. With his aid, the second Vulture King grew formidable, attacking more lucrative targets in the Stormlands and escaping into the Red Mountains before the enemy could mobilize. Yet the betrayal of his brother enraged the elderly Lord Rogar Baratheon of Storm's End, who then personally led an army into the mountains to end the rebellion. Joined by King Jaehaerys atop his dragon Vermithor, they destroyed enemy camps scattered throughout the region until finding Sir Boris Baratheon. Though Rogar wished to kill him, Jaehaerys did not want him labeled a kinslayer, and so took up his own Valyrian steel sword Blackfire and slayed Sir Boris in single combat. Continuing to sweep the mountains, they eventually found the second Vulture King, and this time Rogar could not be kept from the fight, even stipulating that if he's killed, the rebel should be set free and left unharmed. But the second Vulture King, believed to be a son of Dornish nobility, was no match for the Lord of the Stormlands, who swiftly cut him down. Although both Vulture Kings were officially named rebels by most houses of Dorne, in truth, they had many noble supporters, including Morian Martell, son and heir to the Prince of Dorne, who advised his father to raise their armies in support of this second rebellion. When the prince eventually died and was succeeded by Morian, he was inspired to continue the fight, raising an army and fleet to invade the Seven Kingdoms in the Fourth Dornish War. Yet King Jaehaerys had spies and knew it was coming, arranging for Lord Borman Baratheon to have an army waiting on land, while the king and his two sons rode dragons against the enemy fleet as it sailed the Sea of Dorne in 83 AC. Morian and his fleet were entirely wiped out, without a single loss taken by the forces of House Targaryen. The third Vulture King rose during the Dance of the Dragons Civil War, when a bold outlaw took advantage of the chaos to plunder the Dornish marches. Siding with King Aegon II in the Civil War, Lord Boros Baratheon of the Stormlands raised 6,000 men but did not march north to help his allies, instead moving south into the Red Mountains, where they destroyed the Vulture King, successfully ending his rebellion. The Stormlands then took a more active role in the Civil War, having avoided the bloodiest battles to arrive nearing the end, but still finished on the losing side, with he and his army destroyed outside the capital. Yet another Vulture King arose in the Red Mountains, but he was brought down in 206 AC by the combined forces of the Marcher Lords in Houses Dondarrion and Karen. Despite leaving a lasting legacy throughout the centuries that followed, no other Vulture King matched the power and grandeur of the first. Even so, the title continued to hold sway in Dorne and beyond, waiting to be claimed by another ambitious rebel lord.